I just turned 86. There you go. And All right. And uh, she, her uh, late husband, Tom, was someone that I worked with very closely at the, the CIA and was, you know, if I would say, who was your mentor at CIA? The answer is Tom. So, I think you've told me about him before. Oh, yes. I have told yeah. you about Tom. Yeah. And um, so tell, tell me how you came to go to Washington, D.C. How the heck did that happen? Because where were you born, Yvonne? I was born in Williston, North Dakota. Uh-huh. And then went to Carroll College in Helena, Montana. Okay. Where I met Tom. Oh, you met Tom. And then he wanted to get his master's degree. Okay. And he couldn't decide between Gonzaga and um, Georgetown. Georgetown. Okay. So, uh, oh, Georgetown sounded a lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. And then how we had Sean. Oh, and, you had Sean? And Tim yeah. was going to be born in about two months. So after. what was it like to go from... Oh, my Montana gosh. to the East Coast. What oh, my that? gosh. Yeah, that's a strange change. What was it about? What, we were what was on, that like? We were on the Canadian border. Tom had a, um, he worked as a what border, guard. border guard. Okay. And we left in a snowstorm. Oh, my goodness. And uh, we, we were driving this old Cadillac. And we couldn't stop it or it wouldn't start again. <laughs> so we got all the way to about a mile from my parents' house and it quit. Uh, so, uh, you know, we were going to, we had planned to drive back to Virginia, but, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we had to fly. Mm -hmm. And when we got to Virginia, it was 94 degrees <laughs> and, you know, a winter coat. <laughs> So yeah, it was different. Wow. So I don't know if you if you yes, pipe in at any time. And you're sort of at a disadvantage, Julia, because I Well, I, you're right there with with the guest of honor. I, and but, exactly. I, but I'm imagining, I mean, I just sort of sit here and listen and imagine things, but what I'm imagining is the visual change too. Like Montana, you have this big sky and it's just a very different experience. Virginia, yeah. very different. Well, you know, I just couldn't believe how beautiful Virginia was with mm. all the trees, you know, the parks. How green everything. it was. How green, really. Yeah. I liked it right away. Yeah. I really did. That's a, it's amazing. It was and, a little humid. Yes, it is. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit humid. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, how many kids did you and Tom end up having? Uh, six. Six. We we had a baby that died. Oh, you did you? Oh. Um, Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. I, I don't know. Well, we had Sean already, so that did help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that helped a lot. Yeah. 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 So we raised five. So. Yeah. And you never worked outside the home, or did you? Well, you know, uh, actually, we had Sean and Tim and Michelle in a two bedroom uh, apartment. Mm. You know, that's not really allowed. Mm. So I did go to work um, in the evenings to make enough money for the down payment on our house. Oh, so what did you do oh, when wow. you in the evenings? Well, I'm a medical technologist. Oh, okay. So I worked in, in the hospital lab there. Oh, very cool. And Tom would get home at five. I'd have And is family. Tom working at CIA at he this was. point? Okay. Wait. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. So anyway, I would have dinner ready. We eat at five. I had to leave. I worked from six to ten. Okay. And Tom did the dishes, bathed the kid. The kids had to be bathed every night. It was just a rule. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did that. That's horrible. So, That's a horrible rule. <laughs> well, I know it was, but you know, sometimes you live with these rules and you don't realize why. Ex That's exactly yeah. true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They probably got all wrinkled up. <laughs> <laughs> but they loved it yeah you know? yeah and tom let them run around naked and it was yeah it was naked fun. is a real theme in in the duffy uh, uh you know <laughs> life you know that is not true at all wait so you live in a nudist colony what's happening right well there's any number of stories where the punchline is and they were naked <laughs> one time <laughs> and the whole thing 
<laughs> so anyway, we got that great house on Halsey Road. Yeah, right. But it was a small house. No, it was not. Yes, it was teeny. It was not. <laughs> no. That was her son saying, yes, it was teeny. No. I heard that part, yeah. To begin with, okay. It had, let's see. Two, yeah, bedroom. two bedrooms up, two bedrooms and bathroom upstairs, living room, dining room, kitchen, and another room we used as a bedroom. Oh, okay. So it was through, and a basement. Oh, okay. That Tom finished off half of it. And then we did expand the house. Oh, I didn't know so that. So we had a picture over there. I never, I never visited you guys there. Okay. No. Well, it was a really nice big area. Mm-hmm. Just one room, kind of. Yeah. Nice windows, all. Yeah, but Tom and maybe you too always wanted to to like farm or be with the land. Well, that just kind of happened, you know. Tom grew up, you know, a lot part on a ranch, mm -hmm. and I was on a dairy farm. Actually, if I really think of it, I was I had kind of had enough of farming. <laughs> <laughs> You were a medical technologist. <laughs> no. But then when it came time to uh, to move out to uh, Hamilton, that it was really exciting and fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they went out. When I met them, they had, what, 10 acres? More like 17. 17 acres out in, uh, at the time, which was far out Virginia. Which is in Hamilton, Virginia? Yeah, which is a little bit beyond Leesburg. Okay, yeah, it's almost near West Virginia. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. It, it had uh, two streams running through it. Oh, and wow. A nice hillside. It was really a nice piece of property. Yeah. Right on Route 9. Yeah. And that's that's when I got to know, that's when I started working for Tom. And okay. Tom invited me to come out to have dinner with you guys. And he was just a fantastic boss. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. But uh, it's interesting, Yvonne, your response to Carmen saying he was a fantastic boss. You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious. What he was like as a dad, and, and, and what your no. what it was like for you at home. You know, he was. I'm sorry, he was a perfect husband. I'm, hmm. I'm, I'm kidding. Why are you apologizing? That's fantastic. Because nobody would believe it. I don't <laughs> think. You know, but he, <laughs> for me, he was absolutely perfect. Uh, you wonderful. Know, I will tell you the most ridiculous thing. When I went to college, I wanted to be a nun. Oh, because I took this heaven and hell stuff so seriously. Did I ever tell you that? No, no, this is great. But no, I thought I didn't know how I'd go about it. I'd go to a Catholic college, you know, and I would somehow, you know, that it would happen. Well, anyway, very soon there was kind of a retreat thing. And so I talked to this priest and told him, you know, I thought I really would like to be a nun. And he said, well, have you have you been dating very much? And I said, <laughs> not a lot, you know, you know, going to formal dances, going maybe to movies or something, mm -hmm. but there was nobody. He said, I want you to date, go out and date, and then decide if you want to be a nun. That's good advice. Smart. Well, I'm glad because then Tom came along. <laughs> <laughs> and so attentive that really mm -hmm. I had no choice. Aww. Oh, that's beautiful. Fantastic. It was, you know, I, oh. you know, I felt so absolutely comfortable with him mm. from the first time I ever went out with him. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so that's why I say I got the perfect husband. Yeah, that's great. It's wonderful. And he couldn't have been a better dad, right? Mm. Sean. He was a wonderful dad for me. It might have been different for the other kids. I think they may have had different experiences, but I, he was a wonderful father to me. Mm. Well, you know, he probably got busier at work. Yeah, he did. As he as and he, he was very he, successful at work. And then oh. we had that commute. You know, didn't get. He left at I don't know six o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Didn't get back till you know six o'clock probably. Yeah, yeah. But it was so special when our daughter, who had spina bifida. And she, she got Michelle, the Michelle. agency. So she, she went to work with Tom. And uh -huh. 
he was really special to and, us. And and Michelle was spina bifida. She was like a celebrity at huh. the headquarters. Everyone knew her. She went around in her motorized motorcycle. And, uh, and, and, you know, she had a strong attitude and she would tell you what she liked and what she didn't like. And it was, it was phenomenal, really. It was fantastic. Yeah. You know, she was probably secretly helping out the agency with compassion early on. Oh, oh. What's that? Oh, I missed that. Yeah, she, what, what uh, Julia said was that by Michelle being at the agency, she helped the agency, the CIA, to become more compassionate mm -hmm. early on. That is sweet. That is, that's, that's so pretty you profound. Got, you got to meet Michelle, did oh, you? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, she, okay. all the, no, I just think that's what's going on. But so Julia, yes, Julia only knows the agency oh. through what I, I have, you know, told her and, and some kind of limited exposure to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, she loved her job and she did have, you know, people would ask her, oh, Michelle, what do you do? Well, I tell you, but then I'd have to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite things is when I was in London from 1990 to 93, uh, a significant portion of the Duffies came to visit me in uh, London and they flew and so at the time michelle had married no, joe no they were they were just they were a well, couple they was kind of they almost married yeah really. but but uh, he was, was also did he also have spinal bifida no he uh you he, he had a, he had to use a wheelchair but he had been in an accident okay so i go to pick them up with a rental car and so it's it's tom it's yvonne it's Grayson, it's so, Michelle and her wheelchair, and Joe. Joe and his wheelchair, and me. And, you know, these European rental cars are not very big. And, right. but, but somehow we got everybody in. It was amazing. Amazing. That was yes. a miracle. Yes, that was I a miracle. Mean, <laughs> think you could do it. I mean, yes. besides that, Joe was a huge man. Well, I, I didn't want to get into that, but. <laughs> Well, I have a I have a question for Yvonne. You had because sometimes we talk about like spiritual stuff on this show and philosophical stuff. And I if I don't I don't know if you want to talk about this, but I was very curious about your statement where you said you were very serious about this heaven and hell stuff. Yeah. What did you mean by that? Like, what do you mean by that? I didn't want and take any chances of not getting into heaven. And Got I, it. Oh boy, if I was a nun, that that would be pretty like you're in. Yeah. Like that's your you're ticket. In. You're in. Yeah. But I I, I I do know from having many conversations with you over the years that we would talk about the books that I had read and that you had read that sort of explored the question of meaning in life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so what? Did. Yeah. What were some of the books that you read? Because after you got through the nun stage and married Tom, but but you still had that question hanging. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be. No, I was trying to think. Yeah. Some, but I, you know, let's see. Anthony DeMello was um, a priest. I think he was in, from India and, uh -huh. and he had, I think he had a lot of Buddhist philosophy oh. and I, I really, I read quite a few of his books. Right. And Eckhart Tolle, did you read him? Uh, or is it Tolle or Tolle? I don't know. I think people say Tolle, but I don't know what the, yeah, yeah. what it is. Did, did you read him? I Eckhart did, Tolle? I did yeah. later. Later I did him. And then also Richard Rohr was another oh, one. Oh, of course. Richard Rohr. I don't know him. I want to check oh, him out. What does he do? And he's a Catholic priest. Uh -huh. And he he he's in his 70s now. Maybe he's even 80. But he has been... Just, I well, this is my Carmen's interpretation, but he's just been barely acceptable to the Catholic hierarchy. Yeah, so like Matthew right Fox barely. a little bit. Huh? Like Matthew like Matthew Fox or maybe Matthew, Matthew Fox. Uh, he, I mean, he may have been excommunicated. He was just went over the line a little bit. He's yeah, like this but, mystical priest. Yes, yeah. and that's, that's, and uh, that's sort of what, and what's the very famous mystical priest of the- Thomas city? Merton? Yes, Thomas Merton. Yeah, I yeah. didn't. I didn't read him. I Tom had read him. Thomas I, Merton. Yes, yeah. 
Yeah, well, um, and then when I lost Tom, um, you know, that-, that So Tom, was, Tom passed almost 10 years ago now. Oh, wow. I I really couldn't live in my house, really. And um, Grayson told me to come- Grayson, uh, her daughter. daughter. I moved in with them. And um, well, there was a lot for me to do just with laundry and cooking. And I did keep going to, um, to the Y. But Grayson had a book that it was by Deep, Deepak Chopra. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that yeah. was something about the 25 secrets. And, you know, I had not really lots, lots of times I couldn't really concentrate. I, I'd had to take notes mm -hmm. in order to really, you know, read it. But that book, it had quite an impact on me, I think. Yes. And, yeah. And then there were other other ones too that I did you ever read any of I, I mean I've read about him but I don't think I've ever sat and read Deepak well, Chopra I, think I heard people say oh he's just in it for the money and everything but it it had it had an impact yeah on me, really yeah I don't think so I have I have done various um conversations with Deepak Chopra you know where we're on the same panel or whatever and I've had conversations with him afterwards I don't think he's into it I mean, of course, the money doesn't, the money allows him to continue doing it, right? <laughs> and so that's not a problem. But um, he's, I think he's, leg no, I feel like I know he's legitimately about trying to help people, trying to reduce suffering in the world mm -hmm. somehow. I mean, he's yeah. legitimately about that, I think which doesn't mean he's not about other things, too. Yeah, I don't know if I can remember too well, really, but. I think uh, if you want to be happy, really, you have to get to gratitude. Mm. And then, you know, it seems like the more things that you have gratitude for, the more things you get to have gratitude for. And actually, that happened to me. I mean, things would just fall in my lap. Like going on a trip to China. The ukulele ladies? The ukulele ladies, you know. And I, I really did decide that anything that fell in my lap, I would do that. Yeah. You know, there were trips with the Quest, you know, we went to the Oregon coast, we went to the high deserts in the, the in Oregon. And really, you know, I think that's one of the secrets really yes. to have gratitude. Yes, I agree. I think that's that's that is that, right. Mary, that's what Mary and I <laughs> Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And I don't yeah. want fear and I don't want anger. Right. Yes. Those two things just, they don't help. Yes. No, not at all. They do not help. The sooner you can figure out how to let go of your fear and anger when it shows up, because it still shows up for everybody. But as soon as you can figure out like, okay, this is because of this, some other thing that I haven't handled, it goes away and it's better. Yeah. 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 Who is it? Who is it? I think it's um. Who is it? She's a woman. She's a Buddhist nun. Oh, you probably know Marianne, a Buddhist nun woman, um, famous. Yeah, I just listened to you it. read her. <laughs> she says she says that that when you're angry, it's like and and you're in a fight with someone, it's like it's like your house is on fire. And you're running away from your house and, and you're coming back with more fire. So it's like, mm -hmm. like the, the job is to put out the fire. Come over, come oh, on yeah. over, Marianne. Hi. 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 So nice to meet you. And I love your you too. Um, commentary. I would like uh, Pima Chodron. Is it Pima? That's what it is. <laughs> That's who it is. Okay. And That's and who you, it is. Thank you. And you've read, Marianne's read her a lot. You know, I haven't, read, you know, mm. I, I would like to really because. You know, so what are we going to try to do tomorrow morning that you're going to introduce oh, me to? Yeah. Have you ever done Qigong? Yes. Don't you Herman. Know? Yes. Ooh. It'll be wonderful. <laughs> well, we thought Carmen might like to try it tomorrow, tomorrow morning. But I'm glad awesome. It, it is amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. Are you doing it at sunrise? We it's about seven o'clock, you know, a little after sunrise. Ish. But you'll be doing it out in nature, right? So you'll be getting the chi, the energy from the nature, and you'll be bringing it in. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. It is. And actually, Marianne has been certified. She's going to be teaching it at the community college here. Oh, it's so good. It makes you feel so good. And it, it like actual clinical studies have shown that it reduces blood pressure. Oh, you you're breaking up pressure, a little bit there. But, it'll uh, just reduce anxiety, reduce blood, oh, absolutely. blood pressure. It's great. And anxiety. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. The trick is to, but you got to move slowly enough. Okay. All right. Well, I'll try to be slow. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you been doing it very long? For about 10 years. Yeah. Oh, wow. See, we just started about six months ago. But yeah. it's, it's addictive. Yes. Now, I look yeah. forward to being exposed to it. Well, um, everybody's different. So some people might not like it. But if you like it, you really like it. Okay. Well, I look yeah. forward to <laughs> Yeah. Many well, who Go ahead. Well, I want to know who the ukulele ladies are. Yeah, oh. tell us, tell us about the ukulele ladies. Well, okay. Um, let's see. It, it's a group that started here just with like three or four of them had been to Hawaii, and they just thought they should start playing the ukulele. So they got together. And have you ever played the ukulele? Yes, I love it. Well, you you know then if you if over there. You, three or four chords, then yeah. plays a lot of songs. So anyway, exactly. um, Kyrie that was at the Y knew that I'd lost Tom. And she said, Yvonne, you know what? You should learn to play the ukulele. And they practice half an hour away from here. And she said, I will, I will drive you to practice. She, she knows I hate to drive. So anyway, I started doing it. And we practice once a week for an hour and a half. And um, there are over 20 of us now. We're getting, we keep getting bigger. We've gone to Hawaii twice and we play at- They tour, they tour. <laughs> yeah, they tour. And we do play at uh, retirement homes and at the VA home and farmer's markets. And it's, you know, it makes you happy to play the ukulele, right? 100%. Banjo too, banjo and ukulele. These are these are mood enhancing drugs. <laughs> well, banjo is I'm sure is a lot harder, but a ukulele, and especially if you're with 20 people, it doesn't matter if you're not too good. <laughs> it doesn't. What do you call what's your is your band it's, called it's, the ukulele you don't ladies? Have to play every chord, you know, if you if one no. chord, you just skip over. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you, what do you call yourselves? Do you, do you call yourself? Ukulele. Ukuleles. Got it. That's awesome. It's very awesome. So do you have any more uh questions for uh Yvonne? I think uh yeah. I mean you do it's it's okay. It's not that painful, is it? Well, I had my my yes, I mean, Well, I sort of think about okay, so I have from an outsider's point of view, I sort of think about um what it was like raising kids and hey there. This is Sean, her this son. Hi, Sean. Oldest. Nice to be. You. And I live I'm... on his property. We built a house right on his property. Well, that was nice of you. You don't you don't make her do tasks or anything. You just yeah. give her a house. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just imagining um like raising kids when you don't see your husband. Like you're going to be a medical technologist at night. He's there and he's giving him a bath. And then during the day, you're taking care of the kids. And uh, is this after after you had all five that they oh, were no. doing this? No, let's see. We only had three of the kids. And as soon I quit as soon as as soon as we had enough money for the down payment, because, you know, like, you know, I, I'd hardly see Tom. That did not work. <laughs> yeah. No. It, yeah. It, it didn't take too long, really. Well, I, I don't know. I think I was only making like five dollars an hour, really. I mean, that was true. Yeah. Then I well, mean this is fifty years ago, probably. Yeah, probably most people made a dollar an hour. Yeah, maybe. yeah. But as soon as we had, I think we needed two thousand dollars, that was it. Mm. Wow. So because I just, I just um 
I wonder about, I, I think a lot about how, how kids are, how people learn how to be a person, right? So how do people learn how to be a person? They learn it from their parents and they learn it first from their parents and then they go to school and they learn it from other kids, right? And they learn it from teachers, but first from their parents. And I feel like your kids saw you both looking, creating, you know, creating a goal to make enough money for the down payment, working towards the goal, right? Sacrificing time with each other and with them and then changing things as soon as you met your goals so that you can make things better. And I just think that's a really key sort of sequence of steps that is missing for a, like probably the majority of people right well, now in this country. Well, it's harder now because, you know, there's so much, there's so many more things to need and want, you know, that long ago, you know, you just, you didn't need as much, really. If you had a you weren't You weren't told that you needed as much either. No, no, really. Yeah. It, it was less stuff. Yeah, yeah. A lot less stuff. Now there's so much stuff. I mean, and with advertising, you see that, that there's so much. Right. Did you want to make a uh, well, action thing? It yeah. was a, so uh, early on, you were talking about the, uh, the, the, that uh, transition between Montana and and uh, Washington DC area and um, uh, I, I, my mom had told me this before about um, uh, you know I, I was imagining that well this small town life was so wonderful and they she explained to me how wonderful it was to be kind of anonymous in a larger environment I thought you might talk about that oh yeah well you know that is true because you know, Tom and I, we didn't have to impress anybody at all. Nobody, nobody knew us. You know, we didn't have any family around us at all. You know, we gradually had friends and everything, but it was nice not to have to uh, kind of keep up with other people. Oh, you know? So relaxing. Yeah, it really, it was really, mm. it was really nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah John, that, and I think, you know, um, it made us so close together too, when it was just, you know, just us and our kids, you know, nobody else to please or anything, just, just us. It's great. Yeah, it really was. That's funny because some people say the same thing about moving to the country. See, it all depends on, right, where you invest your yeah. sort of attention, right? Because you can move to the country. I don't have to keep up with anyone because there's no fancy parties, and, you know. Well, we did end up, you know, Tom quit his job and we we did go, we bought a ranch actually and, and lived on a ranch for 20 years. Wow. But, you know, that was kind of hard on Tom because there weren't, uh, there weren't friends around with the same it was very conservative and uh, I'm, I, you know it, I think it was kind of disappointing for him. Tom was a person who really liked to talk about oh, ideas. Oh yeah and politics yeah. and just everything that was going on in the world you know yeah and there, there was almost there was one person remember Sean that uh, I can't even think of his name yet but really it was rare to have somebody that filled the body. Yeah, Bill Defani. Yeah. Yeah. I still remember something that Tom said to me, his experience, you know, talking with the farmers and the ranchers. And he said, you know, Carmen, farmers and ranchers like a little bit of inflation. That you know, <laughs> a little bit of inflation makes it easier for them because, you know, they at the end of the growing season, they can sell their crops for a higher price than they anticipated at the beginning of the growing season. Mm -hmm. to, and to this day, whenever I hear economic news, I, it always pops into my head. Farmers and ranchers like inflation. Okay. <laughs> at the right time, at the right time. They the don't right like time. inflation at the wrong time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So anything else you want to tell us, Yvonne? Oh, that's enough. <laughs> oh. Oh. No. Well, do you, have, do you have advice so do you have advice for people who might 
be watching this and say, okay, I hope when I'm 86, I look and feel as happy and as vibrant as Yvonne does. Do you have advice for those people? Well, I don't know. You know, one thing I did uh, experience a really serious depression hmm. probably about maybe 25 years ago. And it had to do somewhat with the losing the ranch. I thought, oh my God, we start, we, it looked like we were going to go broke. <laughs> you know? mm. And so, you know, I, I really was a wreck for, I don't know how, how long do you think, Sean? Five years. Huh? Five years. Five oh, years. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Year, but it, it, it's not like it went away. Like, well, it was, it was, I would say more like maybe six months or so, mm -hmm. but you know, um, it, it, the, the, it was terrible, really. The calves were dying. We weren't getting along with my sister, all this stuff. And, um, well, you know, it, oh, I know. Uh, the doctor said, okay, I'm going to send you to uh, a what? Counselor? Counselor? Some, some kind of stuff. Anyway, um, you know, she put this big thing on the board and all these things. I had no idea what she was talking about. <laughs> she said, you know, I think you would really, um, it would help you if you got meditation, if you started meditation. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know what meditation is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, it sounds, it sounded hokey to me, meditation. She said, all it is, is breathing. You just breathe. And, you know, I think that may be what saved me. I did that. You know, she start, said, start out just with 10 minutes, gradually up to half an hour. And I know uh, sometimes my son Andy would come in. He'd say, oh, mom, everything's okay. Would you just quit being so ridiculous? <laughs> but really, I think that helped. And then finally, it was almost kind of magical. Like one day, I felt like, I am so thankful to be alive. I mean, this is so amazing to be in this world. You know, yeah. it really, it's just about blew me over. Mm. And then I think, you know, then I just decided to be happy. It was so weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, when I lost Tom, I... You know, I was a wreck for that. Then I was a wreck for at least a year or maybe even two. But, um, you know, I got help then, too. I I went to, um, we to a hospice thing. They had 10-week sessions, and I went to three of them. So I just kept going. And um, then finally... A friend of mine said, Yvonne, you've got to get back in your house. You know, you if you don't, you've got to get back in your house. <laughs> so, um, so I did, finally. My uh, my granddaughter and, and her husband had been living in my house. So they, they found another place, and all, that all worked out okay. But I think basically really... It comes down, maybe you do have to go through some of these hard times to finally realize how lucky we are, you know, that, that everything really is okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, now really, you know, obviously I miss Tom a lot. I mean, you know, but, you know, what am I going to do? I, I want to have fun. And really, Walla Walla is a great place to live. You know, and I keep busy. I, I just have fun every day. Yeah. Hmm. Well, That's excellent advice. So meditate, look for help, keep going, choose to be happy and have fun. Yes. Very good. <laughs> All right. So have you had enough? That's <laughs> <laughs> we had enough 10 minutes ago. <laughs> well, I'm thanks, thanks Julia for jumping in on our this is sort of an impromptu uh 
panda, but I, I just, uh, I, Yvonne is some is a soul that deserves to be widely known. I agree. I don't know if I, I don't know if widely known. You know, this is this is not this is something. It, it's not a big deal. Anybody can do it. Yeah. You know? Well, um, yeah, easily, easily said at 86 and happy, but not easily done. So actually, I can think of several people who would be really interested in watching this episode. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. I, I am just lucky that I have good health. I, it's yeah. just, yes. You know, I just, I'm just totally lucky because, you know, a lot of people I know suffer, you know, and and yes. stuff. And I, I just don't, I don't have that. No. So anyway. Anyway, Julie, right. great to uh, have you be part of uh, this exploration of Yvonne's excellent. Well, I'm gonna, no, I'm going to have a beer, okay? Ex yes, you are going to have a beer. <laughs> I might even have two. See, two beers, two beers. <laughs> so Yvonne's excellent adventure. And, uh, yeah, thank you. It was an honor. Thank you for thinking of this. <laughs>